How's it going everybody? I wanted to show you a concept of an interesting little build idea that I came up with. Um, this design you've probably seen before. Uh, Neil Laos is the first one that I've seen it off of on his YouTube channel. I like how compact it is. You basically have one hub in the middle that has a um, little uh, portable transporter surrounding all the things around it. So that way you have one input chest, one output chest, and uh, all the crafters around it. Very nice, not too hard to set up. You do have to place at least one of each of those four buildings and then set up the individual locks, what you're crafting, where they are linking to. It doesn't take too long, but it is a little tedious. Um, I wanted to figure out a way to make this whole tedious process as few steps as possible. And so that is what I'll be showing you guys now. I have placed down one building called Building Hub 3. And when it's finished constructing, it just sits there and waits. It will wait for me to put an item in the input slot here. So I'm like, okay, I am short on circuit board, so let's, let's build some of those. I click that. It'll go ahead and run through the code. Um, it will place down the buildings and the places it needs. The uh, crafting buildings, there is no way currently to place them in a rotation. So for now, I only have the two in the back, and then you can manually place the rest how you want. It will hopefully be fixed in the future. Maybe they'll add in a code or I'll just use a mod. And then the very last thing it does is it shoots this laser beam down, which is just telling you it is checking to make sure that every building that has been in place has been uh, finally constructed before running the very last of its code. And now it's done. I'm gonna pause before it starts filling up resources here. So what did it do? Well, it told the hub to lock the required resources based off of circuit boards the materials to build a circuit board and two circuit boards to hold for transporting into the portable storage, which it has linked. The portable storage locks all of one item. That way you're not getting excess crud like this crystal put in or whatever. The requester also shows just the materials that it's needing as well as linking the hub. And any assemblers will also put in the correct building. So in this sense, the assembler for circuit boards. Um, versus a uh, robot arm for something else, the robot assembler for another type of craft. And it will also set the right craft as well as one slot each of the required inventory. And it will also link the hub. So now, since this is all set up exactly how you want, you can just copy and paste it once it's been built and you know shift click it around and, and fill up the remaining slot. So it's really easy to, to finalize it. Um, and this can all be built while you're off doing other things as well. So it kind of works in the background. The other nice bonus is it will, um, I actually paused this luckily before the very final code happened. Um, you can see here, this is kind of a construction queue. So I'm gonna show a, a quick example of the construction queue and then I'll break down how the code works for those who are code interested. Okay, let's say that you have multiple buildings that you're wanting to build at the same time. So what will happen is whenever a building is placed, it checks if there's already other buildings in place. So this claimed number one, and this has claimed number two automatically. This is important because I want it so that if I tell this to build circuit boards and this to build cable, they don't the, the recipes don't interfere with themselves because they're both using the radio transmitter as a way of communicating with other buildings around it. But because this is construction building number two, this is now on radio signal number two, where this is on radio signal number one. So that way, information for this building and information for this building is not interfering with themselves. The other benefit of doing this is I have a way, uh, and I'll show you in the code in a little bit, of determining what the radio uh, frequency is of the building adjacent to me. So I'm just waiting for at least one of these to finish construction. There we go. So this one has finished construction. As you can see, it has determined that the building that is adjacent to it is on signal one. And it's looking at that because of the signal of the building, not because of the radio. So it takes the signal of the building next to it and puts that into the radio so that it can receive whatever the instructions it needs to receive is. And this is something that you could probably use for multiple applications, but I at least am using it for this kind of construction thing. 
Same thing here. This one's signal is two. So this looks for the closest signal, which will be two, and then says, oh, two is cable, because that is what I'm outputting on this radio transmitter. Um, you could make it so that you have a rule to yourself that you only ever craft one at a time, and then you could have the signal be the resource instead of that, which would save you radio receivers and radio transmitters in the crafting process, but they're so cheap. I mean, this one is, I mean, I guess it's one circuit and a couple plastic, and what is this? Yeah, same, but in reality, it's not that bad, not a huge resource hit, but if it is for you guys, you could probably change the code around to make it a little bit cheaper if you need to. Um, but the nice thing is, is that code system at the very end, after it does the whole building check, um, it will clear not only this uh, uh, signal here at the very last step, it will also clear the construction here. That way, in the future, if you have any buildings that are, I don't know, potentially on uh, request number two, and in a future build, uh, here in a second here, it should clear out. It, there we go, there it cleared. Um, any building in the future that's on channel two, which may output something, like I mean, if I tell this to be channel um, two and I have it as crystal powder, this will show up crystal powder, but these codes have already completed what they needed to complete and will no longer interfere with future builds. Um, it's only a temporary localized information solution, basically. All right, so I'm about to go through the code. Um, so for those of you who have stuck around so far, thank you for watching the video at this point. Uh, if you don't wish to view the code information, don't worry, all of the blueprints and stuff is in the comment down below. Um, so you can go ahead and use it as is and just run with it. But if you want to know how my code operates in more detail, or at least my thought process in it, please stick around. My code is not the most efficient thing. I know there's a few ways that I can improve it. I'm uh, aware of some of them as well. And I just choose not to do it. Uh, but if you see anything and want to comment on like, oh, hey, you could do this instead or whatever, I would love to hear from it because everybody has their own like way of doing things and mine's is not going to be the best. So who knows uh, how I can improve my code in the future based off of your guys' suggestions. So we'll start with the simplest one here, the product storage. Um, this has a subroutine that every building outside the hub has. It's called local building finder. What it does is it searches for the construction uh, signal that's being outputted by the hub. Um, every hub that gets placed get, has a queue form where if there's more than one building being built at the same time, uh, the number gets stacked. That way they don't interfere with each other. This is basically one, finding a building that has a construction. That would be the entity as well as the value of it. The entity information, I need to make sure, and this is more of a precaution thing because it doesn't always find the closest one. I need to make sure that the closest building, the distance of this, is at least two or less. That guarantees that it is the hub I'm looking for because then that means it's adjacent. Anything outside that, anything larger, is not important. Once it finds the closer one, it will then change the radio receiver in this building to the signal and the strength of the signal that is being provided by the building. So for instance, in this example, I have this being construction one. Construction one is in the radio uh, transmitter with the circuit board as the signal being transmitted. And this one has on the radio receiver, the construction number one as the channel and circuit board as the signal being received. This is true for all buildings. This is how it can communicate. There's no other simplified way that I could think of to have it communicate because of the fact that I need to know what I'm looking for and having one constant value be what I'm looking for and grab extra information from that value just happens to be the simplest way. If you guys have a uh, alternative solution to this, I would love to hear it because it would save me having to put radio receivers and transmitters and everything uh, that at least these complex builds. But for now, this just seems to work the best for what I need. 
So it takes that information from the radio receiver, waits five ticks just to make sure the radio receiver updates completely. And once it has updated completely, take from the second slot, which is the signal slot, the value, which is circuit boards, and lock every item to be circuit board. Then exit the program. This shuts the program down and prevents it from repeating. You want to make sure you do that for anything that's using the radio receivers section to either exit or bypass it because you don't want future builds affecting past builds because of a signal being transmitted to something you don't want it to be transmitted to. So that is why when this gets a circuit board, it locks everything to circuit boards. The next complicated one would be the requester chest. The requester check chest has a boot up thing. Basically this starts as a yellow square. So is this a green square? It is not, it is different. So it goes down here. Same thing, finds a nearby building, waits five ticks. That way the radio receiver has enough time to get the information it needs. And instead of putting in an internal variable, it puts it as external variable. This is for me to have a visual reference of what I'm trying to craft and it gets grabbed from other things. Then one of those other things it grabs from is the item locker. Now, unlike the supply chest where there's only one item that I'm locking, this one could have one, two, or three items. So this subroutine basically figures out what it is. What is the ingredients of the product? Is the ingredient a two ingredient or a three ingredient or a one ingredient product? And then lock the slots based off of that answer. So if it is a two ingredient like, a, like the circuits, it will say B has an ingredient, it's iron plates or metal plates or whatever. So that's not blank, so it doesn't go up here. Instead it is different. What about C? C is blank, it's only two ingredients. So it locks half the slots to be crystal and the other half to be plates. Um, after it has locked the plates or the, the appropriate slots, it gets its location by getting self and getting location. Then it subtracts from that location it found to then get the entity one above it. The entity that's one above it is the um, hub. That's where I want everything that is put into the supply chest to output to the hub. So this is where that gets put into. Then you change the boot up to be a green square. This means that it's done. So it repeats the code all the way to the beginning here and says, oh, it is green. So then it goes to the upper root instead of the lower root. So this is a way of me bypassing the signal grabbing section of the code. It will only ever run that once. Now it runs a code on repeat where it will grab the ingredients, do another one of those ingredient checks, grabs the appropriate number of ingredients based off of what the check says, then waits 30, sec uh, 30 ticks before repeating. Um, this could be done in a more compact way. I could turn the wait ticks to go back once I figure out what root it is instead of having it check every time. But I find these four little checks to just add a little bit to this wait tick timer and it doesn't hinder anything. You usually get way more products than you're crafting unless you're out of products and then you have issues elsewhere. These little delay isn't going to be the issue, um, in my opinion. So... That's how half of these get crystals, half of these get metal plates, and the hub gets selected as the output here. Now that the boot up has been green, any changes to this will no longer affect this part of the code. The assembler buildings, the robot assemblers, and the uh, robotic assemblers and the um, refineries all have the same exact code in them. The only difference is the blueprint that the hub calls on. So I'll explain that part later, but just know that all three of those buildings have the exact same code. First, it shuts down. This is just a safety precaution. It makes me feel a little better that it won't build things before I'm ready for it to build things. It does the same local routine. I don't really have the ticks here because by the time it gets to that point, it has uh, gotten the information it needs. But if it makes you feel a little bit better, you are welcome to put a uh, weight tick in here to kind of like put a little buffer in. Um, I have found in my testing it's not really needed, but it could be put there. Once again, it gets itself, it gets its location, it moves down one, 
and gets its thing for the registry. This will be the hub again. So any crafted items will be outputted into the hub, which will then be put into the storage. I need to know what items to lock. The product doesn't care if it's one, two, or three, because I only ever want one stack of each item. And if an item is a uh, void, has no item in there, like for instance, circuits have only two ingredients, the third ingredient will just be an empty lock slot. Then the last one will be the item that I'm trying to craft. Then it will turn that item in this in in this section to be infinite and to turn on the crafters. The infinite matters here because this is linked to the two crafters, so it will craft infinitely this product. And it will also link down here so that the display is the right thing. Because, like the other one, it exits at the end, any future changes will not change the recipe here. It is locked in place. Now the hub. This is the most complicated part, so if you stuck around this far, congratulations. Hopefully your eyes haven't glazed over too much because it might uh, be a little bit <laughs> harder for me to explain here. So I apologize if I screw up anything. I'll try my best. Um, the very first thing it does is it checks if there's other buildings that are also in construction mode. If there is any buildings in construction mode, it checks what the highest value is. And uh, that's basically what this loop is. It looks for the signal, grabs whatever the first signal it found, and compares it with B. B is zero to begin with, so it is by default larger. So A replaces B, then it repeats. It keeps doing this loop signal until every single unit with a signal has been checked with this. So it will go through every single one and only the highest value will ever survive because anything smaller will just get ignored. And then it will be, I'm done, I've gone through every entity and go down here. This checks is B empty. This only happens if there's no buildings being constructed currently. As such, this will never go over here. It'll just skip down here. Because of this, I know for a fact this is the first building in the construction queue. So it goes construction one into the signal and continue on with the code. If it's anything other than that, take whatever the highest value construction number and add one to it and make that my queue. So if there's a building five construction out there, it'll make this one building six. After I know what my position is in the build queue. And this build queue is not so much a build one building, build two building first, build three building kind of a thing. It's more that it outputs a localized radio transmission. And I want to make sure that it's a consistent number and doesn't interfere with any other buildings that are being constructed at the same time. So that's what this does. Then it holds here until item has something. If item is empty, it will wait two ticks and then check again. And it'll keep doing this until you've put something here. Once I put something here, in this case, green circuit or circuit boards, it will then put whatever my signal is, which is construction one, into the radio transmitter's first slot, the channel slot. And it will put the ingredient that I have selected in the second slot, what it's transmitting. That way, every building around it will have that same information because it's all based off of this same signal that was determined in this part of the code. After you have determined what is now being transmitted and what the value is being transmitted, get the location of the constructor. It's a two by two building. And just because of my orientation, it's this lower right, but I think by default, it's the upper left. But either way, I'm just always gonna refer to it as this orientation. So it takes the lower right one um, position and then it adds one to the Y value, meaning it goes down one and it copies that value. This D value will be used later on, but for now we'll just put that on hold. The B value is where the current quote unquote cursor is. The cursor places a product storage building in that spot, then goes one to the left, then places a requester chest in that spot. Then it goes three up. And now I need to know what type of crafter because there are 
three different types of crafters in the game currently that I'm using, I need to know which one the circuit boards utilize. So I put the ingredient here, and after this subroutine is done, it outputs what building I need. Then, and I'll go through the subroutines here in a minute. Then it, now that I know what building I am, I take the building and have a subroutine to place the building. So as, um, there's a bit of like a looping thing. So to compress it, I have it in a subroutine. Then it outputs the location. It actually input outputs the location because it starts to know where am I first placing? Where have I finished placing? So these two things kind of run back to back. Um, so now let's look at how I know what building to grab. I have basically more subroutines in here. Uh, I have a subroutine for a material checker. This is a universal material checker. You put what the item is. In this case, it's being pulled from here. What building makes these items? And then I put individual items. Right now in my playthrough, these are the items that the assembler can craft. If my assembler in the future can make more than five ingredients, I just put another one of these in line and continue. Um, I also want to check if it is a refinery. And if it is not a refinery or an assembler, the only result left is a robotics assembler. I did this because both my refinery and my assemblers can craft four items each currently. So this subroutine, just so you know how it works, it's very simple. It's a compare item thing. Compare this item with this item. Are they the same? If they are, they are crafted in this building. If they are not, then check the next item and so on and so forth. And at the very end, when, ev when all five items have been checked, if there is nothing more, it just outputs a zero result, which means when this is checking, zero is not the same as an assembler. It is different. Then it goes down here, does the exact same thing with this one. Once again, if it is a zero result, it is not a refinery, so it has to be a robotics assembler. And whatever result is outputted gets put into the building slot here. That building slot, like I said, goes into the placer subroutine. The placer subroutine says, hey, is this building a assembler? If it is, build an assembler at the location provided, then move the location one over and do it again. This is just a counter to make sure that I only build two and this counter is uh, connected to all of these. So once again, is it a robotic assembler? If it is, build that. If it's not, it has to be a refinery, so on and so forth. So this is what places the last two remaining buildings. After those two buildings have been placed, I have the same kind of item lock as before, where it grabs the items, locks the slots appropriately, but makes sure that the uh, crafted item takes up the last two slots. Um, so very much like the requester chest. The next section of this code will grab coordinate D, the one that we were holding on to from way, way back then. And this will be where the supply chest, the, the supplier chest is, the one that's uh, the final goods. I'm waiting for it to be finished with construction. So basically it gets an entity at that coordinate and sees, is it under construction? If it is, wait 10 ticks and check again. And it keeps doing that until it's done. When it is done, I wait another 10 ticks just as a little bit of a buffer. I don't really think this is necessary, but I like to have it there. And make sure that the um, storage is that. That way all the crafted final components go into the storage chest. Um, the other reason why I have this tick is kind of a little bit of a buffer to make sure that if any items somehow made it into the hub, it doesn't go into the storage chest until it's had enough time to run its code and lock the appropriate uh, slots. Um, after it has stored this, I want to make sure that all the buildings that I requested are, uh, to craft have finished crafting. 
And that's what this does. It starts off with D because that's a known starting location. And it pings that, that's what that light beam was, waits two ticks, and does the same thing. It checks, is that thing a crafting, uh, a construction? If it is, ping, wait two ticks. And this just keeps the beam going. And it keeps doing that until it's done. The very first one will automatically succeed because I already tested it before. But just to make the code simple, I just have it start there. Then it adds one to the counter. This counter is checking um, how many buildings I've checked. I know there are four buildings I need to check. So after the very first building, it is smaller than two. So then it moves one to the left. This is where my requester chest is. Checks where the requester is until that is done. Then it is now two. So I have checked two buildings. So the third building is the assemblers. The assemblers start off three higher upwards. So check the first assembler. It is now um, three as the result. So it goes to the larger side of things. Three is smaller than four. So it moves one over. That's the other assembler. It checks that. And then it goes here. Four is equal to. It now exits this subroutine. It waits 20 ticks. This is because the assemblers can take a little bit of time to run through their code. And I want to make sure that they have completed their internal code before I do my very last, my variable reset. This is a code that I use in testing a lot as well. But basically, I can put any variable here and any component here with the appropriate number that I want. And all it does is it copies a zero value or a blank value into each of them. That's all it does. So it's a very universal way of clearing information from specific integers. I can even clear it from like D's and B's or whatever I need it to. Um, so this just wipes it clear and then exits. So at the very end of the program, it will clear this one, this one, and this one. So now there is no more building one under construction which means this will no longer be outputting a value of circuit boards to the channel um, construction one. And I can have another building in the future be working on that channel without any interference. So hopefully you guys caught all that. Hopefully it was helpful or educational in some way, shape or form. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm going to leave because my voice is shot. <laughs> so you guys all have a wonderful rest of your evenings. Goodbye.